tragic accident changed the course of his life forever. For most, it would have begun a life of discontent and wallowing around in self-misery. For Jonathan Nadeau, it kickstarted a new chapter of inspiration and appreciation. Even though he lost his sight permanently, he gained a passion to put creativity first in all areas of his life. And now, he wants to encourage you to do the same. There are times when you'll be faced with a choice. Be crushed by the weight of the situation or use the fresh start to rebound bigger, better, and more inspired than ever before. This is Tornado. Stories of those who refuse to choose defeat and instead chose to embrace the storm. Here's your host, Jonathan Nadeau. Greetings and salutations. Thank you for joining us. My name is Jonathan Nato, and this is Embrace Your Storm. We've got another exciting episode for you, as always. Today, I'm speaking with Andy. She submitted a film to the Tornado Film Festival, Unmasked. So, Andy, thanks for coming on today. Hi. Hi, John. Lovely to, to meet you and hope to catch up someday in person soon. Thank Definitely. you so much for taking time out for us today. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thanks for coming on. So, uh, the, the question I like to ask everyone before we get into Unmasked is what uh, what brought you to using to, to film as being your creative outlet? Like what brought you on on that uh, down that road? Well, um, I have been a career banker. I have been a banker for most part of my life. And then um, one day I just decided to, uh, to follow my heart and follow my uh, passions. And that's how I ended up in the, in the creative world. I started as a theater producer uh, and then I moved on to making films. And today um, I have made about nine films uh, under my production banner, Arclight Productions. And um, yeah, I love acting. I direct a lot of my films. Uh, I've directed five films. And um, and yeah, I, I write, I dabble in screenplay. I, I love, I love uh, music, I love choreography. So anything creative, it's bring it on for me. And it's been a lovely, uh, soul fulfilling journey for me so far in this uh, new creative phase of my life. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so what what kind of like um, f- films did you like, you know, watching when you're growing up? So uh, books, films, uh, my favorite genres were always uh, mystery, thriller, Mm. or rom coms. I am a sucker for rom coms. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I love romantic tales and I love uh, thrillers. So those are my favorite genres. Uh, I mean, as a viewer, those used to be my favorite genres. And I realized as a filmmaker, I mean, I've I've been making a variety of stuff, uh, stuff but again, these two genre, genres are where I feel that I am I'm doing very well. And maybe it was something that I've carried in me since I was a kid, uh, which I'm only realizing now that I'm trying my uh, hand at different uh, genres. So (laughs) interesting, very interesting. And so uh, I guess that leads into kind of Unmasked. Um, You you want to tell the story, the the audience about the, what Unmasked is about? Yes, so Unmasked is a featured film. It's about a 15 minute film. It's a thriller. Um, And it's one of the, as I just mentioned, it's one of the genres I I really enjoy. And Unmasked has been loved by audiences uh, in Singapore. Uh, We opened to, uh, like our premiere show had 700 audiences and uh, we've had multiple shows since. And um, it's it's a a edge of the seat kind of thriller where in brief, uh, this very wealthy lady, uh, the, the the film's based in Singapore, so it's about this family uh, in Singapore, and uh, this this wealthy lady has been murdered, and uh, during her funeral ritual of the thirteenth day, which is a custom uh, thing in India, uh, we see how uh, every uh, uh, many members of her family and friends who are there at her ritual, uh, they each seem to have a motive for murder. So you know uh, we kind of the, the story uncovers how everybody seems to have a motive for murder 
Um, and then the story goes on to uncover, uh, you know, various things happen and uh, how then we know how the murder happened and why it happened. And then there are twists and turns. And uh, one moment you think, oh, this person is the murderer. And then you realize, oh, there's another mastermind behind it. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, you realize there's another kingpin behind it. So it's That's like cool. a, you know, a typical thriller of twists and turns and uh, basically like, you know, entertainment. Entertainment is what it, that this movie was. And it was amazing fun doing it. And our audiences have loved it. It's got amazing music background score, uh, which kind of, you know, uh, makes you feel the film. Definitely. Definitely. So what what's the what's the the background about the, the ritual you're talking like that's part of the movie? Like, what is that? So that is called uh, Teravi, which is uh, if when somebody passes away, I mean, there's obviously the, the cremation, etc. And on the 13th day, the uh, family and friends usually will get together to uh, do prayers for the soul and also in some cases celebrate uh, the person who's passed away like you know mm. uh, you you're, you're basically there to revisit memories of the person who's who's passed away it's called tervi tervi means 13 so it is the 13th day after death and it's one of the final rituals uh, of a, a person passing away okay so, that's that's cool so so then the uh that's where the dur during that time that's yes, when the... that's where all the flashbacks like, yeah so, i mean in in a normal therapy you'll see people going up uh, in front and addressing the audience about their memories of this person uh in this film uh the way it transpires is there's there's a person taking a tray of tea to every member uh uh, at the event and as the, the the tray of tea passes from one person to another that person goes back into his flashback of memories mm. uh, of of that incident which kind of shows their relationship with with the victim and their motive like you know that's cool uh, I, 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 I like movies that's like that that play kind of, yeah i mean it's not a linear narrative it's uh it's a non-linear narrative it kind of goes back and forth between flashbacks and stuff so and then it has as i mentioned lots of twists and turns so uh, but but that's what thrillers uh, you know that that's what make thrillers in entertaining right like it, absolutely uh, linear is no no fun <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, now is it not, did you write you wrote this script then so the story came uh, from uh, a writer in based in singapore and then uh, the creative director of the film and myself and the writer, we sat together and we worked out the screenplay. Uh, and which is the usual way I do my films that a lot of uh, writers in Singapore uh, will keep sending stories to me. Like at any point in time, I have a bank of 25 scripts that I'm sitting on. Mm. So at least 25, I pick what I want to make and then we start the work of developing the script. So, so it's a long process. It takes months for us Definitely. to develop a story to a script to a screenplay. So, so yes, I, I was uh, writing this. I mean, I was one of the writers for the scri uh, script and the screenplay stages, but the story idea came from somebody else. Like, you know. Uh, yeah, from, yeah. From, like, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. So it, how, it's long, all for us. how long did it take you to, uh, to produce the film? So my films are produced pretty fast. Uh, we are a lean, mean uh, team uh, and uh, very, very micro budget films uh, we make because uh, we, we we produce our films in in a market like Singapore, which is which is quite small, like in terms of the revenue returns that we can get back. Uh, we're not in an established industry like, uh, say, Hollywood or India. Mm. Uh, so so yeah i mean uh, we we have to keep our costs really really low these are micro budget films that i make uh, but uh, it easily um, so unmasked was done very fast i think about 8 months oh wow uh, but i was making three films together so i took one and a half years to make three films wow yeah so it was kind of uh, back to back and running parallel like post production was kind of running parallel um so yeah i mean it was it was it was quite a stretch after my my screenings i took a two month clean break like clean, <laughs> <didn't do> anything. <laughs> i was dead i was like completely wiped out <laughs> i believe it <laughs> but but yeah it, it was a very very rewarding journey because audiences loved our films and it, it all worked out well that's really cool so, so what i think you mentioned uh 
earlier, like you have some other scripts. So like, what, what are some projects you're working on right now? Like after you have, now that you have unmasked, you know, finished and that's making it circuit. So nothing that I have uh, uh, spoken about publicly yet. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. But, but yeah, there are, a, there are a couple of projects that uh, big projects that I'm working on and I have uh, ambitions and dreams of making them bigger and better than anything I've done so far. So fingers crossed on that. And uh, yeah, I hope we have everybody's best wishes to to make our combined dreams come true. I mean, it's it's not just my dreams, but dreams of my team, like the team that I represent, uh, the team of artists who work with me uh, to create these works of art. So so yeah, we're all collectively uh, dreaming to make something bigger and better. <laughs> That's cool. So like, what what advice would you give to people starting in the film industry? Like, what would you like that are getting started? you know, right, like whether it's, you know, writing a script or maybe getting into producing or directing, like what advice would you give someone? So if you ask me for a very honest opinion, I would uh, say that um, either have like, at, at least when you're starting out, I mean, this is a very tough industry to kind of really make a mark. So at least when you're starting out until you found your footing, um, especially financially, uh, you should have an alternate profession. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you know, till you found your footing and uh, because after all, I mean, you have to pay the bills. I hear you. I hear you. To get through your life as well. Um, And uh, then, yeah, I mean, when you've really found your footing and you know that you can make it big, then, you know, you can just just go all in. But like in my case, I had a banking career to um, kind of, you know, see me through. And then I also have a financial consultancy business that I'm running on the side. Uh, but it is uh, it is very challenging, especially in the the early early years. There's a lot of struggle. So unless you, I mean, either you have rich parents or a rich husband, <laughs> or, or, or somebody to sustain you, or if you need to sustain yourself, then you need to have something on the side. And it needs a lot of passion and patience. Mm. Uh, it needs uh, like you know you have to be patient. You have to be patient with yourself. It is not something that you can build in a day. Uh, it takes a long time to like, you know, usually a film, if I'm trying to create a feature film, it'll take one and a half years to make, right? You know, and for the one and a half years, the, the whole world will be asking you, what are you doing? Like, you know. Right, exactly, exactly. So it needs patience. It needs uh, it needs a lot of dedication. It's like long hours because when I'm in the middle of a project, uh, sometimes I have 20 hour days, you know, mm. and like, I, uh, I, I remember this one time we had a 24 hour shoot you know wow. I mean it's, it's crazy because you have when you're working with micro budgets then you know if you have like your location for a day or you know you have your cinematographer for limited hours and you just have to squeeze in everything and I you have to you. Like action work at the end of the day so it, it's a lot like you so you need a lot of passion and patience <laughs> yeah that's yes. that that you're you're you you hit the nail on the head you're definitely right about uh about the patience part i think a lot of people don't realize uh how much that comes into play when they especially when it comes into creating a film there's so much that comes into to getting that from the script to uh you know seeing it on a screen or you know getting that that finished product so it does take a lot of patience and time you're right yes yes and a lot of flexibility, uh, you know, like you sometimes our, our scripts develop on the state, I mean, on the sets and right. tell our actors, you know, you have to be flexible. You have to be just because you've learned your lines does not mean that is the line that's going to come on. Screen. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, but it's it's an amazingly fun process. I think everybody in my team, uh, I mean, they just they are doing it because they love doing it uh that's the beauty of it so so yeah i mean it's it's a great place to be with a bunch of like-minded people and it's awesome fun it's soul fulfilling uh definitely like i can put that down on paper that when you know audience watches you on screen and appreciates your work nothing that you do anywhere else in the world feels as great as that i hear you (laughs) i hear you yeah no definitely so it, it is very rewarding but yeah so do you, do you want to give out like uh like websites or uh, social media stuff so if people want to get a hold of you or if... sure um they can uh, I have a website arclightproduction.com 
Uh, and if uh, you search for Anindita Ghosh Singapore on Google, you'll get about one and a half pages worth of uh, articles on me. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's A N I N D I T A G H O S H. That's how I spell my name. Andy is just the name that my my friends call me by. So so yeah, Anindita Ghosh, Arclight Productions, and you'll be able to contact me. Andy, thank you so much for your time and your submission to the festival. Without uh, without your work, there'd be no Tornado Film Festival. So thank you so much. No, thank you so much, John, for taking time out to to you know chat with us and to hear our experiences from another part of the world. You're in a very different industry. We're in. A, I mean, you know. Uh, yeah. I, I hope I have been able to give you a flavor of uh, the Singapore market and the Singapore film industry, a uh, uh, small part of it. And uh, and yeah, I mean. The, Thank you so much. Lovely. And I'd love to collaborate and see where it takes us. Absolutely. Thank you so much again, uh, Andy, for your time. And everyone, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And don't forget to embrace your storm. See ya. Tornado with Jonathan Nadeau. If you haven't yet, please subscribe now. So you're first to hear new episodes with more stories of inspiration about the highs and lows of life and how embracing the storm is so much more fulfilling of a life than being crushed by the weight of the world. And until then, we hope you're inspired to do something. Whether it's creating, participating, or learning, whatever leads you to your personal passion.